Hello, hello, and welcome to another video. I don't know what the audio is going to be like because I'm outside. And I'm a little bit weird about doing it out here because I'm in a communal sort of area and <laughs> flats around me, sort of thing. And I'm battling with the elements at the minute. I've got rain clouds right above me. It's now the 29th of May. So you know what that was like. This will take a little while to come out. I know that because I've got a video up showing me doing the six pots just like this. These were done two years ago. I painted them purple to match the rest of the bike. I'll put some pictures up of the six pots because you want to for a bit. They're upstairs at the moment, so I can't show you. And I'll put a picture of the bike up. Many of you will know if you watched the channel before what bike I've got. It's a ZX9, a 2000E1. But these match perfectly with the purple, what they call violet, which is on the top of the top fairing, front fairing, and some of the graphics as well. And that they all sparkle, this sparkles in the sun, it's lovely. I don't know if you'll notice if I move the wheel about a bit, but you'll notice over time as I'm moving them about and moving the other brakes. Let's take that off already, that's already snapped. I've got all new ones of them on the new brakes and stuff. I can always get some more for these and sell these on or something. But yeah, we're gonna bleed these, well, empty these, take these off, and then we'll put the six pots on. As long as it doesn't rain, <laughs> we'll get this video done in one go. One thing I have already done is just opened the brake reservoir, emptied that of fluid. This is a six mil bit of PVC tubing, which goes on there nicely. I do prefer to use five mil actually, because it does hold on better, and I, I do actually sell this stuff. I'll put a link in the description if you want to get some of this or sell the syringes as well. You need the 100mm to fit on the 6 and 5mm tubing. This is how I prefer to do it. And I will show you when I've put the six pots on how to um, get fluid into the system on a dry system and then show how to bleed normally, which you may know already anyway. Oh, one one. And also how to purge the air out of the brakes, which I also needed to do with these four pots. I've done it as well on uh, ZX10 when I painted those, because it's hard to bleed them from dry for one. Let's get them on here. Felt that that wasn't fitting right, but I'm sure it's an 8 mil. Yeah, that's done it. But anyway, yeah. Um, Air gets trapped into the back side of these calipers, even the radial ones. And you have to purge it out or you have a spongy disc, uh, spongy lever, spongy disc. <laughs> That'd be pretty clever. Right, yeah, I'm just going to empty the brake system of brake fluid. So all I do is connect the tubing on there. It's okay with the. I think I'm just going to get some tissue and put that around here somehow. I think I was about to say I would also like to um, change the lines because you can see they're not in great condition on the um, banjos. I don't know what makes these are. They were already on it when I got them right. But I haven't actually got just emptying this into a jar before I put it back on again. But yeah, I would get um, new lines, but I can't afford it at the moment. So I'll stick with these. These ones, obviously, you can see it's silver. Oh, I should have got some 5 mil. I just grabbed this bit of tubing, which was already in my spare room, what I've got a makeshift workshop in been sat there for a while. I just realised I've done that without actually cracking the bleed metal properly. It's annoying that you can't sort of get that into a position where you can keep that on there. But that's so annoying. I'm going to have to go get some five more, but I hope I'm not always getting my hand in the way so you can't see what's going on. I'm not used to doing these type of videos really, which I wish I'd have done more of really over the years. So not really much is coming through now. So what I'll do now, 
Let's do the same on the other side. Just go crack the bleed nipple and suck as much as the of the brake fluid open through. Just make sure everything is dry. So then I'd go the other side. Obviously, do the same. Suck as much of it through as I can, and then we'll we'll probably. Crack these and then tighten slightly again just so that I can undo them once I've got it off. Then undo these, take them off, then I might un hold it upside down, get some tissue around it and pull that off, trying again not to get um, brake fluid on there. It may be okay if you get a little on there as long as you get it off quick, but if you get it on there and it's, it's that wheel strip, as I'm just doing the same thing, we'll quickly get that done the other side. So I've done what you saw me do this side of suck through all, all the brake fluid. There will still be a little bit in the caliper which you can just tip out. Just get some tissue on top of the, where the banjo bolt is and turn it upside down and all over the place. And you can just sit it up like that. You can see a little bit still coming out. We'll worry about that another time but yeah, here's the one from the other side. I've held up pretty well. I painted these two years ago. Obviously a bit dirty especially in places you can't really get to to clean them properly. Pad's still pretty good, but that's what we were on when I first got the bike three years ago, over three years ago now. I've got brand new centre pads in the six pots of course, a bit of fluid on the tire, so now I just need to do this side. Just grab this, I'm just going to wipe this down just in case it's got some fluid on it, the ratchet. And we just need to hold the wheel with my foot. <laughs> just crack that very slightly, turn it, slightly nip that up. So then when I take the caliper off I can turn it upside down and undo that then and get that off a little bit safer. These are new bolts obviously which I did buy for doing the six pots, which I actually bought well over a year ago now. <laughs> but I explained in the previous video why it took me so long. Some of the reasons why it took me so long to get around to doing those. I can't remember which ones were from Pro Bolt. These might be. I'm not 100% sure. Because I got some from Pro Bolt. I think these might be. I also got new bolts for these, for the six pots. Which are obviously on the six pots. And to get these off, you just have to get close to the wheel. And then turn it slightly in get it. Hopefully you can see what I am doing. Just need to get this on there now. So that's why I did nip it off. speed up some bits of this because I'm going a bit slow just to try and be a bit more careful with where this brake fluid is going. I, mean, I could start undoing it mostly up here. Up this way I mean. But once it gets a bit more loose, turn it up. I'm just trying to protect these brakes because I'll need to get some money back on them I guess. It'd be a bit of a waste just to leave them sitting. There's a good brake still. I just thought I'd like to have the original six pots on there. <laughs> Move that caliber out of the way quick. I'm just going to get some tissue on there and we'll try and get that out of the banjo, the banjo bolt out of the banjo. Just won't really get too much dripping from there. And as you may be able to see, I don't know what you can see, you may be able to see that on camera. Got the six put on onto the other side. Thought I'd quickly do that before coming back and doing the other one. There we are. I'm trying to be careful what I'm doing here while checking the camera. But yeah, look how nice that looks. Everything brand new that I could have, even them little bolts on the top are brand new. Put them in the screw uh, threads to save the threads so they've got painted purple too. But look how that sparkles inside, so nice. 
All right, we need to get them on there carefully. Get a rag to protect it. Get these pads spread apart. I don't know if you can see that because I can't see the screen, but some nice new double eight centered pads as well. I'm just a little worried about touching this as well with them, so I want to somehow just keep that out of the way for now. When I get this on here, I've got to go in at a funny angle and get this. I'm trying to get that the other side of the cloth. Get these pads spread apart. And I'm also using the cloth not just to, to protect them. <laughs> I'll talk, don't worry. Not just to protect them from the brake fluid from this, from the bamboo, but also a, quite a tight space between the wheel and the thing, so that can be a little awkward getting them on there without knocking them, and I don't want to ruin the paint already, of course. And then this. Oh, wait, there we go. I think that's there. For some reason that's Check this. That's that's the main annoying thing having to film outside and stuff. You can't really see what you're doing. Lift that up another bit. Hopefully I've got it all in shot okay. Just nip these in place because I will be taking them off again at some point. While holding that out of the way again, I'm going to take the banjo bolt out of here. Some eagle eye viewers, well, you won't see because you haven't seen the other one, but if I show, when, I, when I show you both of them, again, I don't know if you saw the other view, I don't know how that's coming out yet or not because I've still got a lot of editing to do for that. Cause it, even just showing the brakes and showing each stage after they were aqua blasted and then after I painted them and all that sort of thing, they ended up being a very long bit of recording so it's the first part was actually recorded February last year the rest was done fairly recently but this caliber actually comes from a band at 1200 because I did get two sets not two sets sorry I did get a set for a ZX9 and I think, believe they're for an older ZX9 than this one of them was in such bad condition I had to scrap that one and buy another right hand side one, this one. The other one's okay, it's perfectly working order but it's not quite as good nick as this, partly because this is from a later bite. It's the band that was like, I'm pretty sure the listing that I bought it from said it was a 2006 but I'm not, not 100% sure if The models with these ones went up to 2006 on that. Right, that should be good. So you use this to give it a little point pen on there. Look how good they look. Look at that compared to the old one. Again, let me check what you can see. I think you can see that. You can see the paint isn't quite as vibrant as it once was. Can double check that's tight enough. Don't have to be stupidly tight, just enough to crush those washes. I might stop your recording again because I actually need and it's wearing clothes about again, so I hope we're really lucky. I'll stop recording again because I need what I'm gonna do while I'm not recorded. I'm gonna top up the reservoir at the top, go to the other side, put a bit of tubing on the bleed nipple, suck some fluid through with the syringe. And then I'll come back around and start recording again. Do that this side. Once you get some pressure in the system, you can then take the syringe off, have the PVC tube on this, on the bleed nipple still, but going straight into the jar, and then you can bleed as normal. 
pumping the brakes open, close, pump the brakes, all that, as most of you would know. So I'll get back to it again in a little bit. Alright, so what I've done since last time I turned the camera off, <laughs> that's right in the spot like it looks like it was meant to be there, but yeah, they need repainting. I've got some high pressure fouls on there that I painted the same purple quite a while ago. Anyway, what I've done so far, I've put these on, obviously you saw me do this side. Off camera I tightened the um, bleed nipples because they were still slightly loose. Topped up the um, reservoir, went to the other side. Let me just wipe this. Got myself some 5 mil tubing to make it less likely to come off the bleed nipple. I'm just getting this cap off here. Some of these can be a little bit of a pain sometimes. They all done nicely, don't they? <laughs> but yeah, five mil fits much better. Holds on a bit better. Oh yeah, so I put, got the five mil. I went to the other side. After topping the reservoir up, cracked the lead nipple, which I'm about to do. Luckily, from here and from the other side, I can see the reservoir. So as I do this, I will actually see the fluid go down. I'll open the bleed nipple and just pull the syringe. Just make sure it's open enough. You can see stuff moving about through the tube here. You can't see it coming right out there, but here you can see fluid coming through. Now the syringe is almost all the way open. I'll just, if I can get the spanner on there, just tighten the nipple up again. Take that off. Push that into the jar. I've got an old jar I've had for ages. got a load of old uh, brake fluid in it. Hole drilled in the top. That can sit in there and will bleed properly again soon. I haven't touched the lever yet. I don't want to touch the lever until I've got a little bit of pressure in the system. Both sides. Always start on the furthest side away from the master cylinder, which is the left side of the bike. So I've done that so far, and then when we go to bleed, normally again I'll do the same, I'll go to the left, then go back to the right. Again, when I purge the air out, go to the left, come to the right. We'll see how it is in a sec, just bleeding normally. So to make sure it's open. Fluid coming through. Sorry, I knocked the camera again. Pull away. See plenty coming through now. Eh? Still plenty in the reservoir. All right, what I'm going to do? I'm tighten that. Um, spill any and we'll give it a wipe just in case even if you can't see any but no they're still not getting no pressure in the thing that's why it can be hard on these to bleed to get pressure in especially when dry some people will say reverse bleed but I hate pushing stuff through this if I rather pull the fluid through just go around and do that slightly more Lots of air in the system still. Now that's tight, I'm going to pump the brake a bit, see if it builds any pressure at all. Again, it still might not, I still might have to do this a bit more. I might even have to go back to the other side and do it a little bit that side as well. See, so little is coming through at the moment, I still don't need to 
top up the reservoir just yet. So it goes up for it, get the venter coming out, and again find a clean dry bit of tissue while we put just in case. Just go go back to the other side quickly and do a couple more. So I've done that a couple of times now the other side. Be level, these top and up are still fine. Pull up the hole. And then I'm gonna pump the brake again a bit. Right, before we can bleed properly, I think we're going to have to properly purge the air now to get the lever getting stiff enough, get all the air out of the calipers. And that's why we also didn't do these up for me. Let me just check that's still recording, it hasn't frozen on there because these GoPros get so hot when they're, even if it's not particularly hot outside or whatever, even when filming indoors. When filming with no airflow, I get so hot. So what I'm going to do now is try and pose the air out with the caliper. Try not to do it too quickly because if there's a lot in there, it might get a bit low in the reservoir at the top. So again, I'm going to just try and protect the caliper while I take it out because it gets very close, if not actually touch on the wheel. Right, now what I do is, as I do that's fine, open up the pads, get something between them so they don't go in. I don't know if you can see that, but that's in there. If I hold my finger there, that should be alright. And what I do, stop pumping the brake and actually turn it upside down. I can feel some of the pistons starting to push out. I may have to just do the other side as well. I may have to do it again. It's definitely improved because, like I say, the pistons have come out. It's kind of a little bit awkward to get back onto the disc. I'm going to take my time because I don't know where in the paint I've got. There we go. I'll probably have to do the same again the other side to really get air out of the calipers. And I might have to do it again after it's fully bled at some point. I'll probably use the bike for a little bit and see how it goes. If the lever does go spongy then, I'm going to tighten these up a little more now. Yeah, I think if I do the other side, we'll get some pressure in the lever then. I already feel a difference. Oops. Once it does start flowing, look, sometimes when you crack the thing, it looks like nothing's happening, but it actually is. And when it looks like nothing's happening, you're not really getting any air bubbles either. These ones are just sit there from before, and the fluid will go through and past them or something. Yeah, it's getting pressure in the thing, and I can feel the caliper moving now. There you go, so a little bit of extra air coming out.
you may just about be able to see some movement. But yeah, that's got quite a nice lever already. Just gonna top that up before it gets close to the um too close to the hole. We don't want to get extra air in the system. We're pretty much there now. Like I say, I'll test it once I get going. Once I get it all done, which is pretty much now, I'm going to top it up. Maybe do a couple more passes here. No air was coming out the other side, so we'll just make sure no air is coming out this side in a sec after topping it up. Then obviously top it up once I feel it's done. And then I don't know if I'll be riding it today or not. I'll take it for a spin, use it for a bit. If the lever then seems spongy, I'll do what I've done again. Take a calibre off at the time, left one first. Something preferably an Allen key between the pads. Hold them upside down in all different angles just to try and purge air out while you're pumping the bait lever. And that'll go up the lines into the reservoir. You may need to top up, you may not. Alright, so let's just bleed this one. Bit more. <laughs> All right, get my pump. Get. Sorry about my neighbours, but I got pump at feet. Good old few times. Make sure the lever is as stiff as possible. Hold it. Crack it. And I think I've only just noticed something on my bike because obviously these have. These are standard, the six pot Tokikos. The four pots were put on by someone else because a lot of people prefer the four pot, mainly for easier maintenance and easier and cheaper rebuilding, I think. But I would think, I'm not 100% sure on this, I will have to ask someone or check somewhere, but being that Tokiko is standard, surely the master cylinder is Tokiko standard. But I'm pretty sure. I can't even read that writing properly now, but it looked to me a second ago, it, was, it might be Nissin Master Cylinder. I know they put Nissin brakes on the F model, the last model of these. This is an E1, there's an E2, then F1 and F2, and they had four pot Nissins as standard. Nissins are good calibers. Let's just make sure there's no more air coming through. really is annoying when there isn't enough room to actually open it and close it for me. One more I think, I think that should be okay. Not seeing no more air coming through. Alright, so there we are. With that, hopefully I'll be able to edit this out but not to seem quite as messed up and jumbled up as I think. I'm going to lift you up now. Be careful because you're connected to it, all sorts of things with the camera. And it's loose like that, but yeah. It's hard to see exactly what you're seeing, so I'm going to do that. Yeah. Obviously, there's movement there, but once it gets pretty tight, I think I need to use them a bit, bed them in a bit. See, yeah. Get, get an engagement back here now. And I think I can make that more solid. It was more solid before with four pots, but I posed the air out of them. But now we've got a proper bit of pressure in there. It's not coming all the way back to the, the, the thing. It stops around about there. You can push it more if you put some pressure on. Some good old pressure on, but they'll work fine like that. You don't want instant solid. No matter how well you bleed any brake system, you're going to have a little bit of play, which is good. And you want to be progressive with brakes, especially in an emergency situation. But I think over a little bit of use, this will stiffen up very slightly. You can see that. That'll be fine like that. But that'll be massively brake sort of situation. But you know, there, it's good. 
still think I will probably be able to stiffen that up very slightly more by doing what I've done before, taking the calipers off. Putting something between pads, tipping them in different directions up, upside down. If the if it wasn't a fared bike, it'd be nice to lift the calipers right up, but you can only lift them up so much on this bike. But if you can lift your calipers up higher, it's even easier to pose the air out on there. I'm totally happy with that now. It'd be nice to see what they're like on the road. Got some pads with them as well. But yeah, I'm happy with that. Right, anyway, hope you like the new brakes. Paint them to match the bike. I'm very chuffed with them. Anyway, I'll leave a video there. Hopefully, it's not going to end up too long. And like I say, I didn't want to keep jumping backwards and forwards each side and up and down to show you because it's such a pain in the butt with the camera. Thanks for watching. Hope you like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in another video. Just got to take that off, put the bleed nibble on, got the dust cover on. We're done.